With the recent CU32 officially here, we finally reached two and a half years into Halo Infinite, and I've had some time to ponder and think about how I actually feel about the current state of Halo. And after looking off into the sunset, all I feel is pain. Ever since 3 for 3 had changed its content strategy for Halo Infinite to CU updates instead of the seasonal drops, us Halo fans have been putting these updates under a microscope and praying that we have something to jump back into, and we're just dying to see some changes added to the sandbox. As a devout Halo fan myself, I think it's important for me to dive into the current state of Halo Infinite and sort the crap from the good and give you a clear picture of how the latest installment of Halo is currently doing. Is a new update system actually keeping the content flow relevant enough to keep playing? Is there really anything left in the tank for Halo Infinite? Let's save up on Spartan points, beg 3 for 3 to drop new weapons for the sandbox, and jump right into this. When thinking about the current state of Halo, we have to critically analyze the success or failure of the newly chosen CU system. Even before Halo Infinite was released, most fans of the series were unsure how the future multiplayer would look. Think back to the end of the Halo 5 life cycle. We had a multiplayer that was flush with content with a lot of customizations, many weapon variants, and a stable map supply. But at the same time, the game's speed was hitting unhealthy levels of Cheeto dust and felt more like a Titanfall game rather than a Halo title. And worst of all, the game depended heavily on this use of loot boxes to push content out and earn those sweet doubloons off the community. So you can understand my skepticism when heading into the next installment. The fear was that 343 would not learn from their money growing ways and prioritize loot boxes or worse, continue with this insane style of gameplay going forward. You can tell my surprise that they actually address some of their issues from Halo 5's multiplayer while continuing or making it even worse. We all know the story at this point, Halo Infinite delay after delay finally made it to the finish line barely surviving, and when it finally released, it was a pretty fun game. But there was not really any content to actually call it official release. It resembled something more of a preview than rather than an actual full title. But even after all the bullshit they pulled with not having much content available to play or a solid chunk of customization put behind a paywall, the gameplay was the best version of most Halo games and I'd go as far to say that it is considered one of my favorite feeling Halo games in the series. What you say is heresy. Taking a modern take of Halo 3's movements with an inclusion of equipments just feels right. It just brings me back. And even when the seasonal passes were definitely a change up from the old methods, it still wasn't bad because most often we got to unlock enough credits to earn next season automatically by just playing the game. I don't start throwing hatred towards my comment section just yet. I'm not saying I like the idea of me buying into season passes every single month, but at the same time, knowing the game was free to play almost guaranteed this was going to happen. Would have much rather have had gotten a buy-in like the old days and a DLC added over time. I mean, that would just make sense. So fast forwarding past the dumpster years when we finally get to see the game actually get consistent content with season drops of 3, 4, and 5, we all sort of felt like finally, after two years, the game feels complete. Then instead of getting season 6, which would have been Infinite's new breath of life, we get the CU updates. The official announcement of CU updates sort of deflated most Halo fans. Because yes, getting free content unlocks is great, but the caveat is that we no longer get seasonal drops with larger updates to them. And when we look at the success or failures of these CU updates, they have been pretty mixed. Some updates were bigger with more map refreshes, which were cool, while some felt like they were just store updates. And along the way, it always felt like the consistent trend 3 for 3 had was that it would get some good news, but then always met with something bad to counteract the good feelings. Perpetually getting kicked in the nuts was Pretty much a standard practice of a Halo fan. Even when looking at the recent update, it fails in the same problem. I'll give you an example. The best update that was added was the inclusion of the Exchange, which is basically a store where you can earn Spartan points, very similar to what we saw in Halo Reach, and exchange them for cosmetics. I mean, at face value, I'm sitting here with just tears of joy. You're telling me we could unlock Spartan points by just playing the game, and then I can buy goods from the store? I mean, that's... That's just insane. But what's the catch? Well, the catch is the exchange is only goods from events that we may have missed during the previous seasons. So items that were part of the spring feeling events last year or colors that were given for those that played the game since day one were now available. So essentially, if you are a dedicated Halo fan and have been playing the game since day one like me, then most of the items in the exchange are unbuyable. <sighs> Fuck.
Okay, all right. So you can earn it by just playing the game, right? Well, you can. You can earn 250 Spartan points a day automatically by just playing one game. And by completing challenges in the operation, you also will add more Spartan points. Well, then at least we could buy a whole bunch of stuff in the exchange, right? Well, not exactly. Mainly because the price of the exchange are massively overpriced, causing most of the goods to hit a minimum of 5,000 Spartan points on average. Then the good items like the new coating that was added would be a total cost cost of 30,000 points, which is absolutely mind blowing because even three for three didn't set us up to be able to actually buy or unlock it. I'm not that great with math, but let's just say you unlock the entire premium pass for the banished honor. Let's then carry the three, do the quadratic formula, and then you only earn 15,000 Spartan points by the end. Okay, so it's not going to be easy, but can we grind to earn enough points to get the 30K? Well, to further the stupidity, three for three granted the ability to earn daily Spartan points by playing every day, which is good. And then also add in the weekly challenges that you can earn a thousand points per week, which does get me excited. But with all that bullshit and math, the daily challenges, weekly rewards, and completing the pass, we still don't have enough points to earn the new unlockable that was from the store. Say what? So then why the hell do you create a system that has so much potential then turn around and just put your fist right through your ass and just make it completely useless right off the rip? It honestly feels like 3 for 3 is either funneling their inner Mr. Krabs or chugging stupid juice before putting this concept out there, thinking that people won't catch on to this. So when looking at these updates, I just feel pain because the overall feeling of these ideas are solid. The exchange should have been in the game since day one. Banished armor schemes, which I literally called in my last Halo video, have finally been added to the game. All great stuff. But the good news, bad news gimmick is starting to get really old. And what's crazy about this whole thing is that even when these updates don't land, as well as we want, they keep on bringing me back for more. They add just enough content for me to try it out, and generally most updates are average. So it never fully succeeds at changing the tide of the game, but doesn't fully fail in giving us something to do. So it it's just kind of mid. Season 3, 4, and 5 were fantastic, but since the CU updates, they have been okay, but definitely should be better. You think the Halo CU updates have been more of a success or a failure? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you support my crusade against store updates, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So when looking at Halo Infinite currently, it's in a very weird state. Looking at what Halo Infinite is now compared to what it was in the very beginning is a complete journey. Like imagine you went back in time and played Halo Infinite at its release and just experienced what that game was like. You would be sick to your stomach because I was one of those people that played since day one. I've been playing nearly every single week and just playing through all these challenges and all these operations. And I can tell you that from the beginning to now, it has been an entire crazy ride. It has been a testament to see how this game has changed, and it was bare bones to say at least at its release. So as we look at the state of the game now, we can say that Infinite has quite a lot of content in the game while not having basic additions that you would expect from a multiplayer shooter, basically calling itself Paradox the video game. So let's first look at the positive. Customizations of Halo Infinite are at the highest tier compared to most Halo games. As much as I know people have a next level hatred for this game, the fact is that the combinations you can earn are insane with the cross core pieces. I am going to press hard on the doubt button when they say we have billions upon billions of armor combinations, but still, they honestly have way more ways to customize your Spartan compared to most Halo games. I know the greed is still out there placing certain armor unlocks behind a paywall, but even if we don't spend a single dime on the store, the free content is immense and they actually look pretty damn good. I know that people hate me whenever I say this, but we are reaching the levels of Halo Reach with the ability you can customize your Spartan. The amount of maps or things we can play on is also pretty outrageous. And we're hitting around 70 total maps at this point, which is wild. And yes, the catch is that a lot of them are made in Forge. And it kind of confirms like what I said back in the day that without the Forge community, this game would have died a long time ago. We have refreshes in Big Team Battle and Squad Battle with many other modes that are fun to play, ranging from Firefight, Extraction, Infection, and many others. So I mean, as much as I can dump on 3 for 3 for not having any of these modes or customization at the start of its release, it is in a completely different state now, which shows how far it's come since that time. Now with the positive out of the way, I feel like I need to take the biggest fart on this current state of the game. When I think of the biggest issue that bothers me the most and gives me the biggest sense of heartburn 
is its lack of adjustments to the sandbox. Now, yes, the absolute lack of weapons to the game has given me nightmares and chest pains. With all the weapons that were created throughout all the history of Halo, Reaver 3 can't find a way to add a single new or old weapon other than a DMR. Almost two and a half years after its release, we have only gotten one weapon and variant. The Bandit and Bandit Evo are good additions to the game, but legit nothing else. When you go from Halo 5, which had at least three variants per power weapon, as well as variable sights and versions of base weapons, then you can understand my frustrations with Infinite. Yes, we have a variant of every gun that is seen in the campaign, but there really isn't anything new that is changing the way we play. There have been several equipments added to the sandbox, which is all great work, but it's also a pretty bad sign when Call of Duty gets more weapon additions than Halo. It's just sad. And I think that most times when people think about Halo Infinite, it's pretty much important to also mention the store. Whether it was Microsoft or 3 for 3, the store prices are out of this world bad. The insane old levels of greed give me absolute hatred toward this era of corporal gaming, especially when you see how indie games like Helldivers 2 can get live service right, and then we get a look of how Infinite's basically kneecapping his community by forcing them to pay real money to earn cosmetics, it's honestly stupid. I sit by at the window and wish upon a star of a reality where Halo Infinite's devs never came up with the idea of an in-game shop and just put all these armors into the battle passes or better yet, the exchange. I think the fact that none of these dumb brained ideas were ever present in the earlier Halo games just shows you how much it's changed since the old days. I mean, I feel like I'm an old man. Most times we talk to Halo fans and ask what they feel about the state of Halo currently you hear varied opinions. While some say the game is dead and 3 for 3 needs to be thrown into the river, while others feel like 3 for 3 has some good ideas but can really miss out on the potential of what they could be doing to further the franchise. I think Ubernick may have said it best. Halo Infinite feels like a game that is worth your time, but just not worth your money. So when I think about the remaining future of Halo Infinite, it's clear as day that we're heading into the final stages of the game. 3 for 3 had announced that they're moving most of the resources to Halo 7, which makes perfect sense to me. But to be honest, the next installment has a ways away. I think in this modern era of gaming, when most AAA games take roughly around five to seven years for games to release. So in my opinion, I feel like Infinite needs to be a transition game to ease the pain for Halo fans that they need to have something Halo to play for the time being. And the big question is, does Infinite have anything left in the tank? And the answer is yes. Recently, there have been some leaks from Serasia that have showed that some game modes that haven't really been touched in a while have recently got some updates like VIP, Assault, Headhunter. What is this feeling I'm getting? Is it hope? Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but game modes being added to Halo Infinite that have been promised since its release date gives me something good to look forward to. That is definitely a happy sight to see. I think the solution to our current issues to Halo Infinite is clear. Add modes, weapons, vehicles when possible. We should be getting modes and maps refreshes on the daily when it comes to these operations. So I feel like there's always something new to play every month. And if you need some inspiration, maybe some Forge creations can give some great options that can be considered playable. And a perfect example of this can be seen in the new leaked trailer on Steam. Forge Falcons Battle Royale, which was covered here on this channel, has been confirmed to be getting its inclusion into Halo multiplayer in the next operations. Even though this isn't as big as a dev made Battle Royale, it is very impressive and made by Forgers. If they can get some help by the devs to make sure that the game mode isn't broken, then I can guarantee it could be a hit. We need to think about how many other Forgers made maps and modes that are out there and are also high level of quality so that we can just give them a real look. And if it helps in the process, then maybe pay them so they have more of an incentive to create these types of maps and modes. I mean, you're only paying them for their work. And I'm not asking you to break the bank, but maybe just hire some forgers as the main source of your map and mode creations. It's not like you can't afford it. And when it comes to the weapons and vehicles, it's pretty wild to me that news that weapons like the double barrel shotgun are nearly 90% complete, but can't get released. I know that it's mind numbing work to do textures for weapons, but imagine hiring an outside company to help complete these weapons instead of wasting money on a company to make forge maps for you when literally there's an entire category log of all these different maps that are available already. I honestly feel like if we were able to get new weapons, then I feel like fans would be more inclined to jump back into the game 
and try out this new feeling sandbox. Especially since there have been several weapons, equipment, and vehicles that are so close to being finished that it would literally change the game completely if they were added in. And I think there's one thing that could be changed in Infinite that could actually have major impacts forever for the game, and that is to open up the dev mods for the community. Imagine having the ability to get access to dev tools to create content. That would actually change every forgers are missing the tools to make developer level maps and modes that have the ability to include directly into the game near instant. On top of that, guns, vehicles, even straight up story missions can be altered if the mod community can get access to it. And if these creations can be given to both PC and consoles, then all of a sudden things will start to change. I think Halo Infinite had so much potential when it first released and what caused so much hatred for this game was the failure to meet the standards of most Halo titles. Therefore, there's inability to address their problems and trying their luck in speed running, losing half their audience in the first two months of the game was something that no one thought could happen. But even after all the garbage that we saw in the first year of the game, somehow year two pulled the game back to an enjoyable state and people loved it. And even recently with news that Halo is having all these additions and modes being added back into the game, fans who haven't played in a while are actually starting to jump back in to test out to see how much has shifted since its release date. I think Microsoft has absolutely failed in marketing the game post launch, which causes everyone to think that the game has not been updated its server since the game was first dropped. I've seen people online actually dumbstruck by the amount of content that has been added to the game and actually make it a goal to download it again so they can try it out. What this tells me is that there are people out there that actually want to play a Halo game that has substance. So whether Microsoft has any plans to give resources to 3 for 3, to possibly give Infinite a slight boost in player count before they cut the entire power to all the support teams still managing the game, I can guarantee there will be a healthy population of gamers still grinding on Halo Infinite, hoping for something to be dropped. So even if the state of Halo Infinite is basically up in the air, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. Whether Microsoft does something crazy like throwing Infinite on PlayStation consoles, or they give some actual resources, I know for a fact that when a Halo title is there, gamers will come. And you want to see what my hopes are for Halo 7's story, go check out my video in the end screen. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.